Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, dungeon editor tutorial for Legends of Grimrock 2. Uh, if you've been following this series you would know that we are slowly creating uh, some small dungeon over here and in this tutorial we're gonna talk about water and specifically uh, how we can fill this pit here up uh, with water. Uh, the first thing you need to know about water in, in, in the new editor or in the new game is is that the water surface is fixed. Uh, that means I cannot change the height of the water. I can, I cannot put it up or down or, or something. It, it, it's, it's fixed and it's always between uh, elevation of zero and below. Meaning that if my floor is at zero, like this uh, floor over here, we have it at zero, uh, I cannot place uh, water that will go above it but since this is this floor here is at minus one, uh, I can place uh, water into this pit and everything below it. Uh, what that means for people that want to create uh, big uh, big maps with water is that they would simply have to start their level lower if you wanted to, for example, have a dungeon where you know you have many elevations of water. So. Uh, the easiest thing to do is uh, simply paint the water. Uh, we just choose a dungeon floor water brush and it works the same way as any other brush. Uh, I want to continue having the floor at minus one and I want to continue having the ceiling at seven. So these are the correct settings and I can just paint the water like this. and. Then I will hit refresh and nothing happens. Uh, that's actually not true because quite a lot happened. Uh, but nothing visually happened. Uh, if I would jump into this pit now, uh, the the torch would go off and you, you can see the the party starts to move slower and we can hear the the water sound and so forth and if we wait for a couple of seconds the energy meter starts to drop and we go up again and it's like we are out of the water so uh, that is basically what this uh, brush does it simply tells the game that if I go into this area here uh, treat it as water and the party is moving in water uh, what's missing is the visual effect of the water and that that is something that we add uh, separately so let's go ahead and do that Let's look for water. And you can see we have swamp water, we have a water surface, which is standard water, and then water surface underground. And since we seem to be underground, let's choose that and just place that anywhere in our level. Uh, it doesn't matter where I place it. This is something that I only place one for this entire level, and it simply tells the tells the game that this level contains water so if I drop into uh, tiles that have been defined as being water tiles uh, it will it will you know change the visual effect of the game and let's have a look at what this does so if I refresh again now we can see we have water here and it's looking quite nice and if we jump into this, now we get the visual effect of the water. We can see the fog and and the reflection of the kindle there on the water. And if we go up again, uh, the party starts breathing again. But uh, this is not the same beautiful water as we have seen in the game, so. Uh, what's missing is that we need to tell the engine what uh, part of uh, this room is supposed to reflect off. So that means I need to manually say this is the area of this room that I want reflected in the water. Uh, doing that is quite easy. We go again to the brush tab and now we change the layer and we change the layer to reflection. 
Uh, reflection layer doesn't rely on the brushes. Uh, it will always just paint something like that, no matter what brush I choose. So this is the reflection layer is just it has nothing to do with the brushes. So don't worry about that. The only thing the reflection layer does is if I would paint the reflection layer around the water and over the water, it will tell the game to reflect, sorry, let's see this, it will tell the game to reflect these walls and this floor, if possible, onto the water. So let's refresh this and go back into full screen. You can now see that uh, these walls are being reflected in the water, but you can also see it doesn't go all the way. Uh, you can see over here that the reflection stops right at about this uh, intersection here, and that's because it stops because I don't draw over here. So if I would do this and refresh again, you can now see that we are reflecting the walls all the way back to the corner. And if I go over here, you can see that these walls in front of me are not being reflected in the water. So let's do this again and hit refresh and now you see that those walls as well get reflected. The corridor here doesn't get reflected in. So if we do something like this and refresh it, now we can see the ceiling of the corridor. But you have to ask yourself, okay, is this normal? You know, do I want the corridor to be reflected because it's black, I mean there's no light source inside of it. So this is a this is like an aesthetic decision uh, the motor has to make. Uh, also uh, my computer is uh, pretty good so I haven't seen any performance hits or anything like that but I would suspect that you know if I were to <laughs> fill the whole level, say, you know, I reflect the whole level uh, at some point, that will probably have a drastic uh, change on frame rate, especially for lower end systems. So we have to we have to take that into account if you're going to uh, create big bodies of water and so forth. That you know, this area we we don't need all this area reflected. So. I think it's a good practice just to keep keep to the area that you absolutely need and nothing more. Something like this. So now we have this is this is the beautiful water we've seen from the trailers and from the game itself. Uh like I showed you before, we have uh different kinds of water and uh if I jump back in here you can see it's you know the grayish color of the fog. But if I delete delete this and put something else like a swamp water, uh, now we have uh, swamp water, and if I go into that water, you can see it's uh, green and all swampy and look looking more like polluted water. And of course, uh, the third water surface we have is just the plain water surface. Uh, it's kind of bluish, yeah. It's not as not as gray as it as the others, but this one is actually quite nice. So, of course, if you're gonna make water, we we need to also uh, put in something like seaweed and, and stuff like that. Just remember to bring it down so it will actually be inside the water, not not above it, like this. Now we have seaweed on the floor. Uh, we can also place some some wall decorations like this on the walls here and, and maybe here. Let's take a look. Ah. Now I fell into the trap I'm telling you not to fall into, which is Always bring those down to the correct height, like this. So 
so now we have some some plants and stuff in the water uh, we also have some uh, uh, like particle effects we can have you know some planktons in the water bring those down so that now you, now we have those small planktons floating around making this more realistic for us and of course we can uh, put fish fish into the water let's play some fishes minus 1 now we have now we have some fishes uh if I wanted to change the the, the depth of the water or, or something along those lines, I would simply go back to the tiles section, choose the dungeon floor water, and like bring the floor down by one. And if I bring the center down by one, like this, uh, I would have created an even deeper water. And, and if the party goes into that. There's no way out, and people will start drowning soon. But at least we have beautiful fishes to watch while we suffocate. Uh, oops! Draw some water here, which I wasn't supposed to do. Uh, also, what to note is that some monsters uh, are, sp you know, specific water monsters. Uh, for example, the turtle. We can have the turtle on land, but we also have the turtle diving. So if we if we place the turtle diving like this and play this again, now we have a turtle in our water, and it's uh, swimming or it's uh, playing the swim animation, and it functions within the water. Uh, so, if we were to place, you know, just the normal turtle, uh, the animations would be incorrect for it. So, it will be like it's walking. But, of course, it's much cooler if it's swimming. So, so if we take a look at this turtle. Where is it? Turtle, turtle, turtle. Jump in. Did it fall down? Did we place it? Yeah. Yeah, it it just died. <laughs> so not a good idea to place the wrong kind of monster in the water. Uh this is pretty much it. Uh of course like I said before, uh Simply draw the dungeon water tile where you want the engine to behave like it's water. Place uh, the water surface or the correct water surface you want within your level and that will bring the visual, visual effects of the water into play. If you want the water to reflect the surrounding area, you need to do that by creating a uh, reflection layer around the water and telling the, you know, the engine what parts of the parts of the room it needs to reflect in the water and you can make the water you know pretty deep you can we can you know we can change go pretty deep and you know let's go all the way to the deep end and see what happens if i you know now i go into the water and now i'm at a i should implode for some some pressure but I'm th these are heroes but there's no way out there's no stairs or anything so uh, but remember uh, that the the water surface I is fixed so the water surface will always be at this height just below you know the the sea elevation so take that into account when you're designing uh, 
water for your dungeon that if you would have started your dungeon at a uh, higher elevation uh, the water surface would not appear until uh, you go minus one uh, that's it for now uh, now you can start flooding everything in, in your dungeon uh, in our next tutorial uh, we are going to go to the beach so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching